Good afternoon. My name is Patrick Wagert. I work at DG Environment of the European Commission, and I'd like to just give you an, a brief overview of the EU biodiversity strategy for 2030. To start off, uh, I think it's useful to see it in an overall context of what's known as the European Green Deal. And as you can see from this slide, um, the European Green Deal is made up from a number of different policy uh, initiatives and uh, policy actions including then action on climate change, uh, action on sustainable transport, greener industry, eliminating pollution, etc. And one particular element then of that is protecting nature, so protecting and restoring biodiversity. And this is the aspect of the biodiversity strategy of the EU that we'll look into further detail now. So the first thing I think to, to highlight is uh, why does the EU uh, need to take action on, on, on biodiversity in particular? Um, and th as this indicated by this slide, it's partly because we have, uh, the world is facing not only a climate crisis, but uh, it's facing also a, a global biodiversity crisis. You can see from the increase in the extinction rate of, uh, of animals, so amphibians, mammals, birds, reptiles and fish. And then uh, on the left hand side, it identifies the different uh, indirect drivers as well as direct drivers of that impact on biodiversity. Biodiversity itself uh, underpins sustainable development. Here you can see a, 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 an overview then of the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goal, Goals. Um, and biodiversity loss is a key threat to humanity with almost half of the global GDP linked to nature. And this was something that was identified at the World Economic Forum uh, at the start of this year, in fact, in advance of the pandemic. Um, as a result of the pandemic, pandemic, then we've seen a greater emphasis or uh, looking to understand the connection between biodiversity loss, climate change and pandemic, as well as restoring biodiversity as a, co a core part of uh, the recovery, as in coming back, uh, coming back greener, as it were, from the COVID pandemic and the impact it's had economically and socially on us. So why is the EU acting now? Well, um, as the, there's, as you may be aware, there's a UN Convention on uh, Biodiversity, the, which is called the Convention on Biodiver Biological D Diversity. And this year, uh, there was due to take place at what's called a COP, which is a conference of the parties. That's in a, a big meeting of all the parties to the to the convention. As a result of COVID, it was postponed till next year. But in any case, COP15, which is the 15th Conference of the Parties, is intended to then set out a global biodiversity framework for the next 10 years in order for uh, all countries around the world, or all parties to the convention at least, take urgent action to address uh, the biological loss that we're facing. Uh, the other element, as I mentioned, is the need to integrate biodiversity issues into the recovery from COVID. Uh, and then the third element, as I've also identified, is the urgency. So we need to address it now. It's not something that we can leave uh, for, for other generations. So there are four different elements of the biodiversity strategies that I'll just uh, go into uh, today. So protecting nature, restoring nature, uh, enabling transformative change, and uh, also highlighting the EU's role for an ambitious global agenda. So as, re as regards protecting nature, the biodiversity strategy sets out then the aim of protecting 30% of EU land and sea. And this is based on the existing Natura 2000 network of protected sites, as well as naturally, nationally designated areas. Uh, it's an EU-wide target, so it takes into account specific situations in individual member states. And one of the objectives is, inter is to integrate ecological corridors to build a more coherent network of protected sites. So as part of that 30%, there's also an aim to strictly protect a third of those areas, um, which would cover areas in particular of very high biodiversity uh, value, uh, and those areas important for mitigation and adapting to climate change, as well as primary and old growth forest. In addition to protecting nature and protecting biodiversity, the, the biodiversity strategy also emphasizes the importance of restoring nature. So that's basically restoring the damage that's already been done. And the idea is then to have legally binding targets for restoration to propose next year, with the idea that there's no de deterioration of protected habitats and species by 2030. Um, also then it would look at addressing uh, agroecological measures or introducing those, 
so to have a greater proportion of organic farming, looking also then at a reduction in, in the use and the risks of pesticides, the reduction in, uh, of pollution from, pesticides, uh, from fertilizers, as well as then planting 3 billion additional trees, which respect to ecological principles. In addition, uh, the restoration elements look at re remediating contaminated soil sites, restoring 25,000 kilometers of free flowing rivers, which is particularly important. If we look at areas such as the, the Western Balkans, uh, which still have uh, a number of free, free rivers elsewhere within the EU, in fact, itself. Uh, we're, going to, we're looking at also uh, at those dams or damaged rivers which are no longer uh, providing a, a, a real use in terms of renewable energy. Um, also an element is then looking at uh, greening the cities, so bringing biodiversity in the city, cities and urban areas, halving the number of red list species, threatened by invasive alien species, that's non-endemic species, and then reducing the damage to seabed uh, and eliminating and reduction, reducing bycatch. So the biodiversity strategy is supposed to enable transformative change, so addressing in particular the governance framework, so how we govern, uh, how, what the, the legal framework is for implementing environmental legislation, unlocking finance, which would be very important, engaging with business and the private sector, uh, improving then our knowledge and education of biodiversity, and prom promoting nature-based solutions, which is particularly important in the context of climate change. Uh, as I've indicated, this is supposed to also set out an ambitious EU approach for the global agenda, that is for the, uh, for the EU's um, ambition for the co Conference on Biodiversity, um, the COP15. So it indicates that we, the EU is not only uh, talking the talk, but it's supposed to walking the walk the walk, as it were, um, including then looking at stronger implementation and monitoring and review under the CBD as well as a fair and equitable share of benefits from genetic resources linked to biodiversity. Um, this also picks up, as I've indicated then, this will be uh, important for our work on the SDGs. What we'll do is also undertake uh, uh, initiatives on, on green diplomacy to indicate to other countries that we're working with around the world that we consider this to be a priority issue, looking at international ocean governance, integrating biodiversity protection into trade policy, uh, making the link with climate policy, which will be again very, very important with the climate change COP next year, and also integrating that into our development policy under international cooperation. The next steps will then, as I've indicated, will be actually implementation of actions, which will be the most, obviously the most important thing of the strategy, given we need to now put this into practice. We'll work closely with the European Parliament and Council to have these ambitious uh, initiatives or init ambitious policy and legislation in place uh, with a view to preparing for this CBD COP, which should take place in the second half of next year in China, Kunming. So this last slide just gives you a brief overview again of the main issues of the biodiversity strategy. And if you need more information, then please have a look at our website. Well, that's everything for today. Thank you for your attention.